We could finish this whole chocolate, but yeah. we got a YouTube video. Okay. It. Okay. When I think of Valentine's Day, I think of two things. Flowers and chocolate. It's a classic Valentine's gift, but I thought it would be fun to put a modern twist on flowers and chocolate. Welcome to my kitchen. And look who's with me. It's me. Catherine Manabot. It's me. It's her. Uh, Catherine is a um, sales rep for Watershed Distillery Sales Manager. Yes. And more importantly, a cocktail geek. So we're yeah. doing a whole Valentine's stay at home. I thought a cocktail um, and chocolate pairing would be good. Yes. Which you say marry really well together. It's fun to sort of do things that are different and unique and I think we're always craving like a new experience. You typically get the same flowers and chocolate mm -hmm. a lot of times. Skip the flowers yeah. and do the florals in your cocktails. Yes. I think the hardest thing about doing cocktails um, with anything sort of floral is not making it too perfumey. You don't want to seem like you're drinking like a no. bouquet. Like you, you want it there to like accent some of the flavor profiles. It was only about a couple months ago that I went to a cocktail making class with you. Yes. What is it about cocktails or even mocktails? Cause we're going right. to give the options for both. We're right. not, it's not all, all going to be alcoholic. There's a mocktail version of each of these. What is so intimidating about it? Because now that I've had a class with you, yeah. I've infused vodka. It's fun to play an experiment. We're going to make two cocktails yes. and they're both going to have a floral theme, if you will, and then they're going to pair with some chocolate that I bought from a local chocolatier called Maverick. We're going to talk about why they pair well with that chocolate. So tell me the names of the two cocktails, or do I need to get your cheat sheet? No, I think I remember. <laughs> Hopefully I do. So one is called um, Tea for Two, which is um, that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey. And then this one is called a uh, Fauna Fizz, or Flora Fizz. Flora Fizz. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's get started. Cocktail number one, and we are ready. So what are we starting with? This one is called Tea for Two. This is um, a lavender inspired cocktail. This is a syrup um, with pear juice. Mm -hmm. And then to kind of combat the lavender, this is a Earl Grey black tea. Okay. With a little bit of lavender in it already. And then I added more lavender to it. So this is just your base syrup. Now, how, now we're gonna um, put the recipe yes. for people to be able to make. Yeah. This again sounds a little sounds um, intimidating, but not. Guess what? If you can boil water, you can make this. Oh, that is, <laughs> so you just, that is the one thing I can't do. This is the watershed four peel gin. So um, we'll talk gin for a little bit because I'm a gin lover. Well, you're a gin lover, I love and it. I want I want mm -hmm. um, people out there who are watching to know that gin. Well, it's been around for a long time, clearly, but yeah. it's making a big comeback. So what's totally. the deal with the resurgence? Gin predominantly has been all about. Um, the London dry gin. A lot of people assume all gin tastes like London dry gin, which is like really piney. Like people say it tastes like a Christmas tree. Um, but what you're seeing with all these American distilleries coming up is that they're making more American style gins, which just means that it's not as juniper forward. So the juniper is what gives it that Christmas tree flavor. I see gin um, in uh, a lot of different cocktails. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, I don't really know. And right. now I've tried them before. They seem like they're easy to work with. You can use it in so many different kinds of cocktails, which is what's what, mm -hmm. right? Like um, ours today. Yes. Okay, so this is our pear syrup. So it's part pear juice, part water, mm -hmm. and then a little dried lavender. You can get dried lavender almost anywhere. Yeah. Dry lavender, not a, not, a, not a hard find. Right. Okay, so we're just going to add the gin. And I got to get my syrup. camera in yeah, there. Yeah, look at that. The beginning my, of my photography skills right. are are lacking here okay, so we're gonna shake this okay um, oh i've got to do the shaker do yeah. yes okay here we go here's an important thing you want to make sure this is sealed right otherwise you got a problem you're gonna wear this i don't want you to wear the cocktail i, I want know. you to drink it this is a rental by the way <laughs> go for it <laughs> So see, it's like frosting. Yes, yes. You can stop. You have a great shake face. I just want you to know that. <laughs> Every drop. Okay. So you can smell that already. For those of you out there who say, I don't drink alcohol, or I can't drink alcohol, we have an option for you. Yes. Mocktails are still fabulous. So what do you do if you want to make this drink and it's a mocktail? So all you would do is just omit in the recipe that I gave you, you would just um, double the syrup, the amount of the pear syrup, mm -hmm. and then just add the soda water okay that's it. and that's it and yeah. you've got yourself a great mocktail yeah. which it tastes similar yeah i mean you're not going to have that kind of gin flair in it right. but 
But, I mean, just because you don't drink doesn't mean you can't be invited to the party. Thank you. Know? you. Like, you can still have a good time. We're going to top this off with soda water. This is just an easy way to add more flavor. We're going to add orange peel as the garnish. So orange peel is awesome because... You get a little bit of sweetness from the orange. Yes. And the way it smells. You're just gonna peel it and you're just gonna squeeze it and you can kind of see the, do you see all the zest, the juice? That gives it a, like a lot of sweetness mm -hmm. without adding more sugar to the cocktail. There's nothing I dislike more than taking a sip and you kind of make that face like, yeah. and you wish you had some off name brand LaCroix to water right. it down with because it's too dang sweet. Because you know you're drinking it and you're like, I'm gonna pay for this tomorrow. Oh man. Perfect. That's so good. So now that you've got your cocktail and your this is your this is your flowers. Now we need the chocolate pairing. Yes. And you told me beforehand I needed to go get a specific kind. Yes, for this. Tell one. me what chocolate pairs well with this. So this is the lemon lavender from Maverick. It's a white chocolate base. Citrus with chocolate goes really well. Mm -hmm. And then specifically with this cocktail, because there's lavender in it um, and also citrus, it goes really well. There's a little, that pair also gives it a little bit of that sweetness. Um, Sorry, I can't open the chocolate. That's okay. <laughs> it seems really weird, but it's so great. There's pieces of lavender. Look at that. Can you do just a plain white chocolate with this particular cocktail? Yeah, it's like the feel. So this is like really rich and like kind of fatty, right? And then this is like super zippy and kind of cuts into it. Now you've got your flowers mm -hmm. and your chocolate. It is time for cocktail number two. This is the Flora Fizz. This is another way to incorporate flowers, a different take on flowers versus the typical bouquet into yes. your cocktail. Yeah. Now, what is the base for this one? So this one is um, Watershed's Bourbon Barrel Aged Gin. So it's the same exact gin we used in our previous cocktail, but um, this gin is aged in our old bourbon barrels for one year. So oh. I call this like our gateway gin. Mm. So this is something if you're, if you think you're kind of scared of gin, this might be the bridge that brings you to oh. the light. The best thing about this is the barrel gives it a little bit of sweetness. Mm -hmm. So I think that really kind of cuts that juniper flavor that a lot of people are afraid of. What goes better on Valentine's Day than bubbles? Eee! Sparkling wine. Catherine gave me one job and that was to pick up the sparkling wine. Right. She said, I'll take care of everything mm -hmm. else. Just get the sparkling wine. Yeah. So I didn't yeah. get the most expensive, but I didn't get yeah. the cheapest. What do you I suggest on picking out something like I that? I think that's fine, especially if you're using it in a cocktail. I don't think you need to go, you don't need to break the bank. This is the syrup we made for this. So this is, um, Hibis dried hibiscus flowers mm -hmm. and rose, mm -hmm. and then also some rosemary. And this Ooh. is an orange juice based simple Ooh. syrup, right? Oh. So it was like kind of like a take on a mimosa with flowers. Okay. So um, this is half water, half orange juice. And you can see that by the color. Yeah, hold that it up the, to the light. The oh, rose yeah. and the hibiscus really take over. We're going to add a little bit of this syrup. So you can smell the citrus in it. She's going to shake. <laughs> Now I want to see your shake face because oh I had a good God, shake my face. Shake face is horrible. Prove it. Um, <laughs> Give me a good one. <laughs> it's pretty to drink as well. For people out there who yeah. either don't drink or can't drink, right. um, how would you make this into a mocktail version? So you can do um, sparkling cider mm -hmm. certainly if you still want to do the bubbles, um, or just soda water again. Okay, yeah. and, and then you can obviously serve it in a fancy glass still. Yeah, and and, and like, then leaving out the gin. Yeah, like a normal Tuesday with sparkling wine, you're like, I don't know what we're celebrating, but good for us, you know? Like. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and I love the color of this cocktail too. It definitely looks like something you could have for breakfast. The floral fizz is fantastic. Fantastic, yes. Uh, can we cheers it? Did I put too yes. many roses in it? No, not at all. Sure. We're gonna go for it. Okay. okay. Let's ready? do that. Ready? Cheers. Yum. It's so, so smooth nice, once right? again. I want to know which chocolate pairs best with the Flora Fizz. Flora, yeah. <laughs> Why can't I get that name, Floral just, Fizz? Yeah, we're doing it, it's fine. Tea for two is way yeah. easier. For this one in particular, I think the raspberry would go really well. Like I would go like a little bit of a darker chocolate. Mm -hmm. Save the mint for after dinner. Yes. Mm -hmm. How dare you make me eat this delicious chocolate. Eat the chocolate. Chocolate and gin, yeah. friends. Mm. Okay, because we are having so much fun in my kitchen, I think that we need to share a few Valentine stories. Oh golly. Ugh. I'm gonna yeah. drink this whole drink first. We cannot do flowers and chocolate without talking about a past Valentine experience. And it would be no fun to talk about good experiences. It's the bad ones that stick with us. It's the bad ones that you yeah. tell over the floral cocktail. I would say worst Valentine's experience was 
a guy that I had been dating for at least a few months. He right. clearly put no thought in it. Yeah. I got flowers that mm. I would say half of them were dead. Just like a very like, a box of chocolates that you would give to like your five-year-old niece. What? I did not know how to react when he gave that to me. Right. And it, it was hurtful because it was like, dude. That's one of those question mark thank yous. Thank you. Here's a truther. Okay. I was so embarrassed by the box of chocolates when my friends asked me, I went out and bought a new box of chocolates. No. <laughs> and I said they were from him. Oh my God. Thank you, Godiva. Lay it on me. Okay. So when I was 22, I'd been seeing this guy. We started dating. We met on New Year's Eve. He was going to take me out. He didn't have a job, but he's like, I want to take you out for Valentine's Day. So many red flags. So I'm getting ready. He calls me and I'm like, oh, he's running late or something. And he's like, hey, I can't do this. He broke up with me on Valentine's Day. When you were dressed as up in- I was As I was getting ready. I mean, there was no consoling me. And he broke up with you? Yes on valentine's day if anyone's out there and they understand this this is yeah. why you do valentine's with your girlfriends yes. cheers this is that. why you do your girlfriends are going to cancel on you day of while you're getting ready never and no. they're going to bring you good chocolate they will mm -hmm. thanks friends cheers whatever cocktail you have or don't have this valentine's be safe thanks so much to watershed distillery and katherine manabot for her cocktail geek expertise I had so much fun, and in the spirit of sharing stories, feel free, go ahead, comment below, tell me your most memorable or most forgettable Valentine's Day. And don't forget, if you like what you saw, hit the like button and subscribe to get a new video every Monday. Have a great week.